Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey and in this video we're going to make a simple sound manager that can handle playing a multitude of sounds to add to your game. Let's begin! So here's what we want to create. I have a player character and I can move him around. As you can hear there are footsteps when he moves. I can use my sword and there's a sound. I can attack and kill enemies and they also have sound when hit and killed. And over here I have a nice crate and if I approach it there's a very nice item sound. Here we also have a simple button in which we're going to add mouse over and mouse click sounds. So I pass over and I click and those are all our sounds. So let's figure out how to create a class to handle playing all of these sounds. All right, let's get to it. So here is that same scene with no sound. I have my player moving, attack the enemies and here we got the treasure chest, all right? Over here in the project files, I have all the sounds in this folder the sound effects were created using Chiptone, which is a great free tool to create very simple sounds. So let's start off by creating a class to help us play sounds. So in here, make a new C-sharp script. This will be our sound manager. So this class will be responsible for playing all of our sounds. Let's first make it static so we don't accidentally instantiate it and remove mono behavior. All right, so first let's make a very simple function to play a single sound. So we make a public static void play sound. And in here, let's create a game object. Then we're going to add the component for the audio source, which is the component that actually plays our audio. And in that component, we can call the function play one shot which plays a single audio clip. So in here, we need a reference for our audio clip. So for that, let's add it to our game assets class. This game assets class is something very useful that I use in pretty much all of my projects. I've done a whole video on it, so you can check it out to see a more in-depth view, but essentially we have a game object on the scene and it contains this script. Then here we have a static instance, and then this class has a bunch of public fields. So in here, for example, I can add a public audio clip for the player attack and now I can go into the editor and here is the game object that contains the game asset script and now in here I can just drag the player attack reference. So now I can go back into the sound manager and here I can now grab the reference by going into game assets dot instance dot grab the player attack. And that's pretty much it for playing a very simple sound. So now we need to trigger this somewhere. So let's go into the character sword handler, which is my player script. This is the class that is handling movement and attacks for the player. So let's go down here to where we are handling our attack. Again, the entire code of this is not relevant to our sound manager. We just need to figure out where we're going to call the function. So in here we have the handle attack and in here we are playing that attack. So it's in here that I go into the sound manager and I tell it to play a sound. Okay, so that should do it. Let's test. Okay, here's my player. Now if I attack, yep, there's the attack sound being played whenever I attack. Okay, so we can successfully play a simple sound. Now let's change our code to be able to play different sounds. So let's go into our sound manager. And in here, let's create an enum to keep track of all of our possible sounds. So we do a public enum, let's call it sound. And in here we add all of our possible values. Then on the play sound function, we receive a sound value. And now we need to know the audio clip that matches this sound. So for that, let's first go into the game assets to figure out how we're going to store our references. And in here, we're going to create a class to handle both an audio clip and a sound. So we make a public class and let's just call it sound audio clip. We need to set the class to serializable in order to make it show up in the editor. And in here we have a public sound manager dot sound and a public audio clip for our audio clip. All right, so we now have a nice class that handles both pieces of data. So instead of adding a bunch of fields in here, we simply have an array of sound audio clip. All right, so now we can go into the editor to fill up our array. Here's our game message script. As you can see, it contains an array of sound audio clip. And in here we can add elements and as you can see, each element has a sound and an audio clip. So let's fill them up. All 
All right, we have our array being filmed with all of our references. So now all we need is to find the correct audio clip that matches the sound that we want. So let's go into the sound manager and in here, let's make a function to do just that. So here we can cycle through the game assets, the sound audio clip array. We cycle through the array and we see if this sound audio clip dot sound equals the sound that we're looking for, then we return the sound audio clip dot audio clip. And after the for each, we simply return null. However, it should never really reach this point. So let's do a debug dot log error. And just like that, we have our very nice simple function. So now up here, instead of using this, we use our function, we go get audio clip and we pass in our sound. Okay, that's pretty much it. So now we can go back into the player script and in here we play the sound and this is the attack code. So we play the sound dot player attack, okay. Now let's also go into the enemy handler. This is the class that handles the enemy. So let's see where the enemy is taking damage. Here is the function where the enemy takes damage. And in here we can simply do sound manager and we play the sound. And in this case is the enemy hit. And then down here we have what happens when the enemy dies. So we play the enemy dead. All right. So all this should be working and we should now have three different sounds being played. Let's see. Here's the player and there's the enemy attack sound. And now on the enemy, And yep, there it is, the sound when the enemy gets hit and when he dies. So all of our sounds are correctly playing exactly as intended. So with all of these sounds currently working, let's make the player move sound. Let's start off by doing it in the most obvious way. So in here, let's go on the handle movement function. And if we are not idle, which means we are moving, then we want to play the sound for the player move. So let's see what happens if we do just this. So here I am and if I move, and yep, that's a pretty horrible sound. So it's certainly not what we want. So let's see why that's happening. Now the reason is pretty obvious, which is because we're calling this function on every single frame. So essentially we're playing the move sound on every single frame, which for a simple game like this means we're hearing the sound a thousand times per second. Obviously that's not what we want. So let's add some sort of timer to only play the sound every certain amount of time. So let's go into the sound manager and in here, let's create a dictionary, which will contain our timers. Now a dictionary holds data based on a key and a value. So it's perfect for storing timers since we can use our key as our sound. And for the value, we use a float. So now we have our play function. And before we actually play the sound, let's figure out if we should play that sound. So let's make a function to answer that question. Now in here we do a switch on our sound. And by default, we're going to return true. So we only need to handle the cases that are different. So in this case, all of our other sounds are meant to be played exactly as intended. However, we do a case for the player move. That one is not supposed to be played every time. So let's do this. First, we test if the dictionary has that key. And if it does contain that key, we test for the time that is inside that key. Essentially, the float value that won't be stored is the last time that the sound was played. And in here, we define how often we want the sound to play. So let's define a float. So let's say we want this sound to play at most every 50 milliseconds. Then we test if the value stored in the key plus this timer is under the current time. So this is the current time, this is the last time it was played, and this is the delay we want between each time. So if the last time plus delay is under the current time, then we can play again. And if not, then we return false. And in here, before we return true, we need to update what's on our dictionary. So we go into the dictionary for our sound and we update it with our current time. Okay, so again, we have this function which returns if a sound can be played. 
Now for most sounds, by default, it will return true, since for most sounds we want them to play every time they're called. However, for this particular sound, we don't want to play all the time, so we have this code. In here we check the dictionary if it contains a key for that sound. We get the last time played, which is what is stored on that dictionary. We define a delay between each time we want the sound to play, and then we simply test if it's time to play. If so, we return true. If not, we return false. So now all we need is to go up here onto our play sound function. And here we're simply going to play only after checking if we can play. The last thing we need is simply to initialize this variable. So let's make a public static void for the initialize function, which will initialize this. And let's set the key for the sound.playerMove. Let's set that one to zero. And I'm going to simply call it on the basic game handler function. All right, so let's test. Okay, here I am, now if I move, yep, there you go, the move is no longer playing on exactly every single frame, but every 50 milliseconds. And all the other sounds still work exactly as intended. Now we just need to play the treasure sound, so let's do that. Let's just go into the treasure crate script. This is extremely simple, it simply has a collider. So in here we open treasure, so it's in here that we simply go into the sound manager and we tell it to play the sound, and we pick the treasure sound. And it's that simple to add a new sound. So again, the move sound, the attack and the enemy kill, and if I go into the crate, yep, there you go, there's the very nice treasure sound. All right, so all of our sounds are currently playing. However, as you might notice, they are not being played in 3D space, so there's currently no difference between the left and right speaker. So let's make them as 3D sounds. Here in the sound manager, let's add a new function that receives a sound and also a position. And in here, we're mostly going to do the same that we're doing in this function. However, we need to position the game object. So we do game object.transform and we set the position to our sound position. And instead of being play one shot, we call play. The play doesn't take any parameters. So instead of putting the audio clip on the play one shot, we put it on the audio source.clip. And the audio source also contains a bunch of different fields which define how the sound is played and how it acts. Like for example, in here, you have the Doppler level but for now, let's just try the default and see how it sounds. So now we need to call this function, so let's go on to the character. For the player move, we call that function and then we pass in the player position. And it's that simple. So let's see where else we have calls to our sound manager. So in here, do the same thing, call with the get position and same thing on the enemy. And finally on the treasure, let's just leave it as a 2D sound. All right, so let's see if we can tell the difference between the left and right speaker. Okay, so here I am, and the camera is following the mouse position, so I can put the mouse on the left side, and we should be able to see the sounds more on the right side. And yep, there it is, the move sound on the right side. Now I've put the camera like this, and now the sounds are on the left side. And yep, as you can see, we got some nice 3D sound. And if we pause the game, we can see the sound game objects that are being created. And in here you can see the various options that you can tweak to see how your sound is played. You can change, for example, the volume runoff from logarithmic to linear. The min and maximum distance, this is the most important, along with the spatial blend, which needs to be in 3D in order to actually see the 3D position. And then you can also mess around with volume, pitch, and so on. These are the settings I put to achieve that result. All right, so as you can see, we have all of our sounds correctly working. Now we want to add some button sounds. So over here, I have a random testing button. It's using the button UI script, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. This class handles a bunch of things related to buttons, so I can use it to easily make this UI element into a button. Here is the button, and as you can see, it changes color when I pass the mouse over, and I can click on it. All right. Now, in order to add sounds to our button, we're going to use something really cool, a extension method. So let's go into the sound manager. And in here, we're going to make a function to add button sounds. 
and in here we're going to put the parameter as this button UI for the button UI. The this keyword means that this is an extension method. We're essentially adding the add button sounds method to the button UI class without actually modifying the code inside that class. This is great for adding functionality to a previously written class. So in this case, it makes perfect sense to add sounds based on this sound manager to another class which does not feature sounds. So we can go into the window code, and here we get the reference for the button component, and we can simply grab that reference, then we call the function add button sounds. And as you can see, this is an extension method that lives on the sound manager, but is applicable when we use on a button. So it seems like we're calling a function on the button UI class, but really we're calling a function on the sound manager. Again, extension methods are really cool and perfect for this type of use. So now on the sound manager, we can now add our sounds into this button. So let's first go up here and add the enum values for our sounds. And down here, we go into the button and we access the functions for clicking and we simply do our sound manager and we play the sound for the sound dot button in this case the button click and just like that we're adding sounds into a button so let's test there's the button and when i pass the mouse yep there's the mouse over sound and if i click and there's the click sound so as you can see this is a great way to add sounds to a completely different class without actually modifying that class now let's just clean up some things in our code. Let's go into the play sound function. And in here, we are creating a new game object every time we play a sound. However, we don't need to do that since for play one shot, we can reuse the same game object, which will obviously improve performance. So let's go up here to make a field. And on the play sound, we check if the one shot game object if it is null and if it is we're going to create it exactly as we did in here and just like that we're only going to create this game object exactly once and every other time the game object will be reused and up here where we're playing a sound at a certain position we can't just use one game object since we need to position it However, we can destroy it after the sound is finished playing. So we can simply do a destroy. We want to destroy this game object. And in here we can choose the time to destroy. So we can simply go into the audio clip and we get the length of that audio clip. So as soon as it finishes, the game object gets destroyed. So let's see if everything still works exactly the same. Here I am, I can still move. Sounds are still playing. It's still attack and kill the enemies. There's the test button and there's the trophy button. However, if I pause the game, we can go in here into our hierarchy and as you can see, the only game object we have is the one shot sound. So we can resume and here look at the hierarchy and there you go. As you can see, the sound is played and it immediately vanishes as soon as the sound is finished. And in here, if you wanted to make this even more performant, you could use a object pool to reuse these sound objects instead of constantly creating and destroying them. So there you have it. We created a simple sound manager class that is responsible for playing all sounds in our game. We can play a sound normally or position it in 3D. All the code is easy to modify with each sound being a value in an enum that could be expanded to contain any sounds you might need. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from mntcodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.